I think it's becoming more and more clear at this point that Square Enix and live services just don't mesh. We know what happened with Marvel's Avengers, that game which had the Avengers brand behind it flopped pretty majorly both critically and commercially. Today's topic, Babylon's Fall from Platinum Games, and it sucks that I have to cover this game this way because I'm actually a fan of Platinum Games games. But with Babylon's Fall, they really have something of a flop. And let's begin by checking out, I guess, some footage of the game. I was already skeptical about it, honestly, having seen it. Just graphically, it didn't do a lot for me. Its art direction wasn't doing a whole lot for me. The gameplay looks pretty box standard. And as far as looter live services go, this didn't really seem to be doing anything special. This is a launch trailer, by the way, and you can see right here, I mean, the likes to dislikes ratio is not particularly favorable for this title. And now looking at Metacritic, now that the game's out, you'll see that critical reception has been pretty bad. Looking at the Metascore right now, not only is it at a measly 41%, but nobody even really cares to review it from the looks of it. So far, we've only got six critics who have given it a score, and I've not seen a whole lot of buzz being generated across social media and across major news salads. This just doesn't seem to be a game anyone really wants to touch because it doesn't seem like people have a good time. The user score only 29 ratings as of the launch of the game, a mere 2.2 among the worst user scores on Metacritic. And if we look at some of the quotes that reviews have put in their reviews, things get even more brutal. Screen Rant right here released this review. This is among the more tepid reviews, basically noting that there is intense combat, but it lacks variety. It is highlighted below the headline that the game quickly gets repetitive, though late game unlocks could potentially break up the monotony is what this uh, review in progress is hoping for, but I don't get the sense that's going to be the case based on a bunch of other reviews. Here is God is a Geek's review of Babylon's Fall, you can read right here this quote, there's so little here to recommend it over other titles. Even Godfall, which was unfairly derided by many, has more depth, polish, and color than this. A lot of people have expressed that Godfall is not a particularly good live service, but when a game can be seen as that much worse than even Godfall, then, you know, it's pretty bad. And it states right here, if Babylon's Fall were free to play, I'd give it a go as it might give you a little enjoyment if all you want is a button masher that takes your loot boxes. Oh boy. But ultimately, I can't recommend it over any other game released recently. A three out of 10. Next up, let's take a look at this review from Destructoid. Here's their article and we can scroll down and check out what they had to say, concluding with the foundation is there and I have no doubt that this would have been a stronger game than would have spread via word of mouth to action enthusiasts far and wide if it didn't have the freemium elements. So monetization wise, it goes way too hard. Whatever happened behind the scenes, I hope it wasn't their call and I hope this isn't the type of product they're going to focus on in the future. Platinum Games did state in the past that they are going to kind of look into diving into live services and hopefully after Babylon's Fall, that is something they'll stay far away from. I hope Platinum Games can focus on what they do best, tight, single-player action games. They're masters of action and by Platinum standards, even the action aspect of Babylon's Fall falls short, no pun intended. But yeah, the game got a 5 out of 10, a mediocre score from Destructoid, and things just get more brutal and brutal with each review I read. Here is Rock Paper Shotgun's review, a live disservice, they call it, and say, the game is also Platinum's first foray into the dreaded minefield of live service, and it's not good. Aside from the teeniest glimpses of what could have been, the game is a bemusing cascade of loot and stats that don't mean all that much. The combat has its moments, but it's largely bleh. The story is meh and all for $60. Definitely not worth the price from what all of these reviews are saying. Then we have Attack of the Fanboy, Babylon's Fall Review. Is Babylon's Fall the next big thing or a Babylonian fail? Apparently the latter, given that their ending quote reads as follows. The murky visuals, bland dungeon design, boring gameplay overshadow the excellent boss design and a killer soundtrack, making this more of a chore to play and dampening the experience tremendously. There is no reason that a player should need to grind for 20 hours or more before finally getting to experience a bit more variety in the game and is a major disappointment in almost every regard. Kind of reminds me of Marvel's Avengers a bit where you have to kind of get into the 
post game before you can start to unlock some of the cooler skills and abilities that make the combat shine and allow it to reach a higher potential but this is even worse than Marvel's Avengers from the looks of it. A two stars out of five disliked. Video Games Chronicle also released their review and they went all out criticizing this game with a one star out of five. Launch review, Babylon's Fall is a dull and cynical service game. At launch, this is dated, consistently dull and features the most average Platinum Games combat we can remember. And... This is Platinum Games we're talking about, so it sucks that the combat, which is the one thing they absolutely know how to nail, even that aspect falls short with this title. If Square Enix thought that Marvel's Avengers was a disappointment, then this game should be seen as a ground zero for a complete rethink of its strategy going forward. Square Enix, I think you should just stop with live service and kind of focus on what you do best. Compared to Babylon's Fall, Marvel's Avengers is a beacon for mission variety, enjoyable combat, and distinct <laughs> visuals. And these are not descriptions I'd give Marvel's Avengers, but compared to Marvel's Avengers, Babylon's Fall falls so short in terms of mission variety, enjoyable combat, and distinct visuals that Marvel's Avengers just stands out that much more, even though Marvel's Avengers isn't particularly good in any of these departments. In comparison, this is a soulless, cynical game that should be avoided. And here's one more for good measure. This is a review from Twinfinite. Babylon's Fall review, Crash and Burn. Jesus. And then as we scroll down, we can see there, end quote, the true problem of Babylon's Fall is that it has no sense of identity. There's nothing that sets it apart from games like it, and it only shows itself as a poor comparison to other free games. That's really the major issue that everyone seems to be highlighting. This is such a bland, by-the-numbers game, cynical in its implementation of monetization, and it just feels like it's following a trend and a blueprint that they hope will make the money because they're trying to break into the live service market instead of establishing something that makes it stand out from an oversaturated market. It's just boring, bland, and completely forgettable. Babylon's Fall feels like it was made to check a box because it is just so empty and slapped together. The cookie cutter levels only serve to swear you or wear you down as you just want to make it through main missions that are just about your only way to play the game. Two stars out of five. The reviews are pretty consistent across the board, so it would seem as though this is it's just not a good game and somehow it ended up being worse than what I thought would be Square Enix's most disastrous live service launch, Marvel's Avengers. And looking at Steam reviews, it's not faring any better either with a mixed score of 52% from a mere 101 user reviews, which goes to show that not a whole lot of people are really playing this game. I'll get to that in a bit. But looking at the reviews themselves, most of them say that they absolutely do not recommend this game. An absolute terrible cash grab of a game for the price they are asking for. It's not worth it. This game pushes microtransactions like if it, as if it were a free-to-play game. Trash, just cash grab. Really thought that uh, game companies would learn a thing or two from backlashes like Battlefront 2, so on and so forth. Which finally brings us to the level of engagement this game has been receiving. Oof, is all I can say with uh, Video Games Chronicle reporting that at launch, Babylon's Fall had launched and peaked at fewer than 650 concurrent players on Steam. This is the peak at launch, and numbers did go a little higher, but not encouraging numbers by any means. So here we have, over the last two hours, roughly 800 people have been playing in the 24-hour peak is sitting at 1,166 players, and that's actually the all-time peak, and I don't suspect this number rising too far above this. I'd be shocked if this game surpassed 1,500 players. Frickin' Battlefield 2042, which has lost like 98% of players, is faring better at like 1,900 players roughly, which is also not good at all for a live service, but Babylon's Fall, the fact that it peaked at lower than Battlefield 2042's lowest player count yet in terms of concurrent players, man, if that isn't indicative of a dead-on-arrival live service, more dead-on-arrival than Marvel's Avengers. And speaking of Marvel's Avengers, while it did see an all-time peak of 28,145 players right now, its player count is looking even worse than Babylon's Fall as most people have moved on. A mere 313 24-hour peak concurrent players. But uh, I suspect that Babylon's Fall numbers will dip below this 
rather quickly if it has only peaked at 1,166. At least Marvel's Avengers peaked in the tens of thousands. Babylon's Fall couldn't even muster anywhere close to that. So I imagine this game will be abandoned rather quickly as players struggle to find others to play with. As this is a game that nobody's interested in due to just its lackluster quality and the fact that its marketing hasn't been particularly great. Metascore wise, Marvel's Avengers did fare better than Babylon's Fall. Metascore sitting at 67, still pretty meager, and a user score of 4.9 versus Babylon's Fall 41, Metascore and 2.2 user scores. So again, Marvel's Avengers is better, but that's not saying much. And it's more impressive that they somehow managed to ship a live service worse than that. User reviews on Steam also fare a little better with Marvel's Avengers sitting at 65% or 67% average in terms of all-time reviews, which is better than uh, Babylon's Fall 52%, but again, not a tall bar to really meet. Square Enix just hasn't been able to really break into the market to the degree that other far more successful life services have been able to like Destiny 2 and, you know, Apex Legends, Call of Duty, Warzone, you name it. So what we're looking at here, ladies and gentlemen, is yet another life service flop for Square Enix. And at this point, I genuinely fear for Platinum Games' future. It's starting to feel like a purchase is imminent, like a major company is going to buy out Platinum Games because the way they're currently operating, I feel like they're losing quite a bit of money and how badly Babylon's Fall flopped is no doubt going to put a major dent on their finances and, you know, I really don't want Platinum Games to go away because when they do well, they do so incredibly well where action games are concerned and I want them to stay around. They're, I think, among the most underrated studios, but there's no denying that with Babylon's Fall and their attempt at live services, they went completely in the wrong direction. This is clearly not for them. They should stick to what they're good at. And I hope that this isn't enough to, you know, kill Platinum Games in any way, shape or form. Uh, I hope um, they can weather this unfortunate situation and rise above it with future releases that are more in line with what they specialize in. But only time will tell. It sucks that this has happened with Babylon's Fall, but unfortunately, it's just a bad game that is not something that should be recommended based on what everyone's saying, users and critics alike. But that's just one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Babylon's Fall if you've checked this game out and what you think the future holds for Platinum Games after this major flop on their latest game release and whether you think Score Enix will begin to shift strategies with big failures such as Marvel's Avengers and Babylon's Fall, neither of which proved to be that long-term monetizable game that the publisher was hoping for. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah! I'll see you guys next time. Yong out!